Hey everybody and welcome back to Big Meadow Mike's and boy am I excited today because we are back at the lake lot and this is actually a different lot than the one that I showed you over the summer. So for the four people that probably watched that, maybe three, um, this is a newer lot that's catty corner from the one that I just got. Anyways, whatever, it's fine, I'll show you. So this is the newer lot and you can see it uh, needs a little work. It needs a little work. I actually came down here because I wanted to see some of the fall colors and do a little weed whacking and uh, uh, I think I'm going to need something a little bit more than a um, lithium battery weed whacker on this one. But, uh, you know, we'll try it. So, what I like about this, this is the closest lot that I could find to the water. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So, right here, this will never be developed on. This is owned by the lake. And you just take a little stroll. Take a little stroll all the way down here. Okay, we're walking down and then boom, here you go. We've got the lake right there. We've got the boat launch. Like I said, this will never be developed on. You know, in the springtime too, it'll actually look uh, pretty sparse. So uh, I can probably actually see the lake, but there you go. The water is there. The lot is there. I figure that's a win-win. So, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, I've never actually been in the lot because it's been so congested with leaves and grass and all sorts of stuff that uh, this is actually the first time that I'm actually walking on it. So let's go take a look. All right, getting in this lot for the first time, I'm actually pretty pleasantly surprised. I mean, there's a lot of clearing right here that's kind of already been naturally done, which makes my job a lot easier. And it's higher up too, which I think is good. So you're not gonna get that flooding, which my other lot that's kind of catty corner back there somewhere in that direction, is uh, it's a little lower level, so you're gonna get a lot of rainwater and stuff coming through, so it's gonna be a little bit more muddy. But um, I do like this. I think this is this is pretty neat. So, um, and the biggest reason I bought it, I don't know if you can see that behind these trees, is that back there, electric. So this lot has electric on it, which I think is pretty awesome. And it's got some pretty cool little trees too, and. I don't think it's going to be quite as bad to clear this puppy out as I thought it would. So, well, we'll keep uh, plugging away. All right, here we go. Here's the other lake lot that I've got. Well, I shouldn't say I have. I'm sharing this with a buddy of mine. But uh, we asked him to uh, mark the land, and he just did one of two lots. But you can see right here. I don't know if you can see the pink tape or whatever else, but he did mark one of them. And this is pretty cool. I mean, you kind of, this has got all sorts of terrain in it. You got some hills over here on the side, a little bit of a valley down here. Um, but super wooded. A lot more manageable to get down here in November than June. And, um, We've got this little ravine thing that comes through. It's just kind of a little spillway, really. Which is great for mosquitoes. Not. And uh, there's, you know, in the summertime, there's only about 400 million ticks. But, you know, it's all part of the charm, I guess. So, yep, this is all ours back here. Back, back behind there, you got some development. But what's great is we've got, once again, we've got power. And uh, we've kind of got some cool little ridges over here. And uh, pretty neat. A couple little lots back in here. So the one I just showed you is literally right catty corner from this. Uh, and that's just my personal lot. In fact, if we walk up here, maybe we'll see the evergreen. I don't know if you can see that, but back over here there's an evergreen. And that's where my other lot is. So catty corner to this one. I would have liked for them to back up, but you know what? That just, uh, they didn't have that available. So you do what you can do. Well, here you go. Well, I figured when in Rome, might as well uh, cast the line out a little bit, see if we can find something. Got a little loose spinning rod. I don't have a whole lot of time, so I just got the uh, 
probably the easiest stuff I could find. So we've got ourselves a little Ned right here with uh, one of their Crossies or Cross, I guess. Crossies, whatever. And um, I think this is a Drew's Craw color. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but we'll uh, toss it out there, see if we can't find something. I figured along these rocks, there's probably got to be a couple little fish. I bet they're uh, probably chasing the shad up in like the shallow areas, but um, I just I don't have all that much time, so I'm just gonna fish the bank here real quick and see see if I can't. Oh, nice, got a log. First cast, got a log. Good sign. All right, so round two. Literally, this will be my second cast. Threw on a uh, something a little old school. Put the Uncle Josh spin right on. And uh, we're just gonna launch it out there. Okay, nice. Of course that's caught up. Man, I am just, I think we all have those days, right? What in the hell is going on here? Oh, nice, look at this. What in the hell? Maybe it's, maybe it's not meant to be today. I did not see this before. Jeez. <laughs> Hold on. Alrighty. There it is. You know, there's one trusty bait. Nice. Works every time. That's the old Ned Rig Copper Truce. It's, it's a nice looking bass. Let's try that again. So I was thinking this would be a better spot, so I moved over to this little tree. Just kind of try to skip it underneath that tree. See if we can find another one. Oh, there we go. Another bite right there. Okay, that's a log. Oh. There he is, right there. Oh, man. Well, we know where they're at, so let's go. All right, we're gonna try one more little area real quick and uh, see if we can just try to find one more. This is actually the boat ramp that's right next to my lot, and if you see over there, that's where I was, just along that uh, little road or whatever you want to call it. I guess it'd be kind of a dam, if you will. All right, there's got to be something hiding back in here, right? All right, throwing in the last cast of the day. I think this that might be might be good. To, oh, nice, sweet. Maybe it's time to go. I mean, that's what all that means. I don't even know where the hell this thing is. Well, I think whatever's going on over here is a good sign that it's uh, probably time to go. So, all right, so I'm just getting back from the lake and it's a beautiful day. I figured, why not take out the Jeep? I got a little something I want to send over to uh, Terry from Bass Fishing Archives. If you guys haven't checked out his uh, Instagram and website yet, you need to. That guy's the National Archives of uh, Vintage Bass Fishing Everything. So, I mean, he's got old catalogs on there uh magazines articles you name it he's got it so check it out let's uh, hop in the jeep and go drop this off i figured i should probably show this too because i'm gonna sell it here pretty soon but this is my uh, 1980 cj7 and uh, it's been a lot of fun i've had it for a few years but i think it's time for uh a new little bass and cruiser but uh pretty neat little ride
We're back at Big Meadow Studios. Man, am I excited today because we've got a serious unboxing right here from Terry over at Bass Fishing Archives. Now, as I mentioned before, if you guys haven't checked him out, please do so, bassfishingarchives.com. I'm gonna put all the information, bloop, bloop that all down below. And uh, make sure you check out his Instagram as well too. Uh, Terry is like the quintessential uh, Webster's Dictionary, if you will. That really dates me. Uh, Wikipedia, I mean, that's probably better, of old bass fishing media. And whether that's uh, catalogs, brochures, magazine articles, you name it, he's got it. So that leads me to why we have this unboxing. So I had a 1976 Bass Pro catalog. And I had that for sale on eBay. And Terry really wanted it, so he reached out to me, and we came up with a deal where we do a trade. Now, normally I would have never done a trade. It's not something I'm interested in, but I, I figured if anybody has to have this catalog, it's got to be Terry. After talking to Terry, I come to find out this guy has an incredible bass fishing resume. He's written articles for In Fisherman Magazine, Bass Masters. He talked about working at this lure shop back in the 90s where he had access to JDM Tackle that people would just dream of getting. And so I figured nobody is more deserving of that 1976 catalog than him. And he will do it justice. He will put that online. He will let people see that. And uh, I really think that that's where it needs to be. Um, it's not doing anybody any favors sitting back here collecting dust and uh so we reached out we made a deal and uh he sent me some pretty cool stuff now terry's not the guy like me where he's going to have shelves of lures that are still new and packaged he's the type of guy that he opened them up he fished them but he's also the type of guy that's got a lot of stuff and willing to share and uh so i'm excited to open this up um, and just dig in and kind of see what he sent me. So let's go ahead and let's uh, take a peek inside. All right, so jumping in here, first and foremost, we got ourselves a little note here. So let's jump into that first. Big Minnow Mike, I hope you enjoy these baits as much as I will enjoy the catalog. I may have made a mistake on the GYCB baits as I found them on eBay for $20. GYCB, I'm guessing he probably means Gary Yamamoto. We'll dig in and take a look at that. Enjoy them and hold on to them. As far as the other stuff, remember the Lure Jensen Speed Trap and Hot Lips are custom colors painted for a shop out of Murtaugh, Idaho for the Snake River Smallies. The color, as stated on the back of the package, is Old Ugly. They are original Lure Jensen before they were assumed by Rapala. The Rapala Fat Traps are circa late 1980s and made of balsa wood. The Bomber Long A's are also late 80s and a couple colors hard to find. The Deep Secrets are circa early 1990s, the Bandits, late 1990s, and the Head and Super Spooks, around the middle 90s. The Lucky Craft Carol, and that's back to the JDM baits, I did a little more research on. The bait was discontinued probably five years ago or longer. The Area Master Crappie, and it's not spelled the way that we think it is, is a cool little bait they developed for trout and panfish. And by the way, that's crappie, and that's C-A-C-R-A-P-E-A. -A -A. Um, kind of a weird spelling for that. They have a whole line of small baits for trout and panfish, but they were only available in Japan. You must either go to Japan or know somebody that can send them to you. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, and finally here we got the Daiwa Jurassic Series. Series were only made for a couple of years, and a limited supply were sent to the United States. They had a leech as well as a really cool lizard. Then the Jackal Squad Minnow is the bait, bait that Cliff Pace won the Classic at a Grand in 2013. It's a newer bait, but because of the package, it will turn into a Classic over time. Maybe this is your first step into collecting baits from the Japanese market. Question. And it's actually not. I do have some other Japanese baits, um, but I'm, I love Japanese tackle. Uh, it's, it's unusual and it's super fun to collect, so I'm all about it. Anyways, I hope you enjoy them. Look forward to working again with you. Sincerely, Terry, Bass Fishing Archives. Well, Terry, thank you so much. I will enjoy these probably more so than the catalog uh, because to me, anything, oh my goodness, in, a, uh, in its original packaging is very exciting. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. All right, <clears throat> now, so this isn't like a two hour video. 
I'm just going to go through these relatively quickly, but you can see right here, this is a full box. So we will go through these relatively quickly, but there's a lot of great stuff in here. And uh, you know what I like about this? When I get multiples, cast one, collect one. That's, I mean, why would you not? Let's start with this. The Rapala Fat Trap. These are ones he said that were... What, what did you see these came out? Whoop, just dropped everything there. That would have been fun. These are late 80s. Still new in package. I mean, this is really cool. I mean, it's even got the... Still got the price on the back. So I've got three of these. Well, so you know what that means. Cast and collect. But they're all the same color. They're all the silver. That's probably the one I'll cast just because the uh, the packaging is a little bit off. Let's go ahead and just... Well, you know what? I don't even want to pull one of these out because they still have a sticker on them. So, you know what? We're not going to pull that out. We're going to move on. Okay. Let's see what else. Here's the Jurassic one that he said was very limited in the United States. Team Daiwa. I love this packaging. This is uh, super 1990s. I love this. I mean, look at that. That's a really cool... And if you take a look at this... Most of the writing on the back is all Japanese. I mean, that is really, really awesome. That's fun stuff. That's certainly going the collection. All right. Here are the Lure Jensen. Uh, these are some of the deep secrets. And let's see, what did he say about that? These were... Oh, speed trip. Oh, so these aren't the same. These aren't the custom colors, but these are uh, discontinued baits. Um... Looks like probably from the mid nineties, but look at that packaging. I think that is so cool. So he sent me a couple of those, love that. And you know what, what's really cool about that, look at that bill. If you look at the bill, the, that is a really, really unique bill. That is, man, that is super cool. Dives 15 to 17 feet, that's crazy, and then you got another one, same color, but that's great. Love that. Very cool. Here's some other ones too. These are a different, looks like, are these a different color? Yeah, maybe. But got a few more of these deep secrets right here. Man, I'm certainly going to fish one of these this winter. That's awesome. All right, let's keep going. Oh, here we go. Now, these are the ones that uh, he was saying were specifically made for uh, a shop that he worked at in Murtaugh, Idaho. And looks like the old ugly is the color. And so they're for smallmouth bass. So they're for the smallmouth bass they had there. But you can see if I don't I hope that color, it is, a, I mean, it is an ugly color. No thrills. I mean, it is essentially just almost just green pumpkin. And I don't know if the other one has, yeah, green pumpkin. But what's cool, it's got an orange belly and then it's got orange flake. That's awesome. Certainly not fishing those. Those are in the collection. Here is a Lucky Craft. Um, this is, oh, here it is. This is the crop he. And I'll show you what I mean. These were, but this is for a small, like you said, panfish trout type bait. And if you see from the back, obviously very limited. I think, I'll have to, I'm sorry, I'll have to read that again. But uh, I don't know if this is even available in the United States. Very cool, super collectible, excited about that. All right, all right, moving on. Okay, let's, uh, okay. He sent a lot of these, and I love them. This is the Gary Yamamoto. This is where he said that maybe he shouldn't have sent so many. Don't worry, Terry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fish these. I'm gonna collect these. Uh, these are discontinued, not necessarily old, but discontinued. These these are the walking baits, and um, they were only around for two years. And obviously, you know, everybody knows Gary for his soft plastic worms or Senkos, but um, he had hard plastic baits for a little bit too. And here they are. And they're very desirable. As he said, they're around 20 bucks on eBay a piece. 
but um, I haven't seen any in original packaging before. So this is something that's, you know, it's an original package. And so, you know, I gotta, got, I gotta have it. So moving on to some other Gary. These are the, uh, these are some of the crankbaits that they had. I don't know why these didn't last longer. Maybe just because there's so many different crankbaits on the market or, or what, but um, here is, it looks like kind of a little bass pattern there. He's got a crawl crankbait there. Very cool. Got another little bass type pattern. Maybe that's a shad, that's more of a shad. And then, oh, here's, that's, this is definitely a shad pattern. So, super cool. Super cool. Those are going to be going over into the, I'll probably set those over with the JDM Tackle Collection I've got there. Okay, another one we got here is Lucky Craft. This is the one that he said was discontinued probably five years ago. And this one's called the Carol, but a really neat little um, popping frog right there. It's kind of got a kind of a light, almost salmon type color. Um, really, really cool, pretty unique, and certainly go in the collection. And I will not be fishing that, but it's that's a neat one. Okay, here's another one from Jackal, and he said this one um, is not necessarily old, but will be collectible because of the packaging. But Jackal baits, just in general, are you know pretty expensive baits, and uh, that's pretty neat. So we'll hold on to that one as well too. All right. Uh, oh, here's one too. Though these are pretty unique colors. You said these are really hard to find. Um, bomber long minnows, and I like that. I mean, that's that's a neat bomber, old school packaging, and um, that's pretty sweet. So I can't remember what he said he was fishing with these for. I would assume this is probably uh, maybe a walleye or maybe pike, something up north. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong there. Here's another one. Looks like it just kind of popped out of the package here, but I really like this color. This is neat. This looks like, well, if I can get it undone here. This almost looks like candy corn. Here we go. Here, here it is. That's a neat color. I like that. What a cool bait. That's awesome. All right, we got a few more. I'll tell you, I feel I got spoiled here. Thanks, Jerry. All right, we got a few more here. We got uh, here's an old Billy Dance right here, Excalibur. I have a another walking bait. Got Bill on there. That's always always love that. And then here's another one too. This one kind of fell out of the package, so I might fish this one. Um, just because, well, you know, it's already pretty much out of the package. Why not? And I might fish that bomber too that looks like candy corn because it kind of came out of the package as well. So, uh, hey, why not? All right, last but not least, we've got a couple bandits here. These are the ones that he said were from the mid 80s, I believe. Um, these ones are bombers, balsa wood from the late eight, oh wait, mid eighties, late eighties. Sorry. Probably should edit that out. Anyways, <laughs> late eighties, balsa wood bandits, hard to find colors. What he said. Uh, so this is a red belly is, is all, is all they call that. That's a sweet color. I like that. It's really cool. And then we've got another one here, and this is the Great Pearl Scales. That's awesome. That was really neat. So, well, there you have it. Um, wow. That is a collection of baits right there, and a lot of really hard to find stuff. A lot of things that I'm not used to. Um, and when I say that, I mean the, the Japanese tackle, some of these hard to find colors that, uh, I, you know, I would have walked by this a hundred times and not known how special that is because it was made for one tackle store in Idaho and it's the only place in the world you could find it. And that's what makes this thing so incredible. And you know, we got it here in two different types of baits. So, uh, I love it. 
I mean, what a great, oh, you know what? Look at these hot lips too. Look, I mean, just let me show you that real fast. I mean, look at the, I mean, that is an insane bill on that. I don't know. What a, what a special collection of just incredibly cool and hard to find baits. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed that unboxing. Um, we've got some fun stuff coming up here pretty soon. I've got some trout fishing coming up. We're gonna be going down to Arkansas, doing a little trout fishing. And uh, we may have another classic catalog video coming up as well too. So if you like that 76 video, I've got another one in store. And so we'll have that out here in the next couple of weeks. So until then guys, we'll see you on the water.